Welcome everybody to racerxonline.com. I'm Chris Kiefer and you're staring at the beautiful, that's right, the beautiful M-Claw edition. That's not what it's called, but that's what we're calling it today. I get to ride the 2022 KX450 SR. SR stands for Special Racer. So, a lot of things different with these factory edition motorcycles. This Special Racer edition uh, has a ported cylinder head. We'll get some shots of that here today so you can see that actually it is ported and a little bit of polished in there. X-Trig clamps that are 23 millimeter offset. So if you guys are wondering, is this the fixed kind or can we interchange the offset from 21 to 23? No, you cannot. This is a fixed 23 X-Trig offset. Of course, Pro Circuit full muffler system. The biggest news for me is the KYB suspension. The standard KX450 comes with Showa suspension. This is something that Eli Tomac had in 2021. From what I've heard, this thing was going to be called the Tomac edition, but obviously that fell apart late in the year. So we are here with the SR edition. KYB is a little bit different than Showa as far as the action on the track. We'll talk about that today. But KYB is a little bit more of an active feel, a little bit more comfort, maybe slightly less movement in the stroke than a Showa. So we're going to have a stock KX450 here today to kind of compare and see what it actually does with this machine. Other little things on this bike, Renthal sprockets, DID chains, DID STX rims, and of course, the Monster Claw setup. If you guys don't feel factory with the price tag already, which is hefty, we'll talk about that later, but you got that M-Claw in the shroud, it makes you feel fast, get dressed, get ready, because you know what, we're going to go ride. And if you don't like my opinion, I understand. I brought two other gentlemen with me, Gary Sutherland and Greg Loop. Greg is up near the 60-year-old mark, so you older guys that have some money want to spend over 10K on a motorcycle, Greg will, here to, for you guys, Greg will be here for you guys to actually break that down. And Gary Sutherland brought him because he has been riding the KX450 Standard Edition a lot, and he can break down the differences. So stay tuned. Watch some action right now on the track and we're gonna break down all the details between the bikes and what stands out. Is this thing worth the price tag versus the stock edition? Stay tuned, you'll see soon. Right, guys wrapping it up for the day 2022 kx 450 sr special racer a couple things i didn't mention before that i missed my bad kawasaki reinforced the subframe where the muffler mounts you kawasaki owners know that it's a nightmare when you put an aftermarket muffler on those tabs break on the subframe subframe so kawasaki reinforced the subframe for this pro circuit pipe also the ecu is tuned to this cylinder head and the muffler we're gonna talk about that right here. I got Gary Sutherland, 34 years old, 5'9", two bills, two hundo, Christmas time's coming, so it could be 205, 207. Um, nonetheless, I brought Gary with me because he knows the KX450 very well. He spent a lot of time on it with me through Kiefer Inc. testing, so I wanted to get his opinion. So real quick, when I hopped on this, Gary, I noticed immediately how much holdup this KYB suspension has. I feel like out of this whole bike, that is the most noticeable for me. The power is secondary to, to the suspension, but once you get on this, the KYB fork, and what I've come to find out, it is an AOS fork, so similar to the Yamaha fork. Um, lots of holdup, a firmer feel, yet the 
there's not a lot of friction and when I, Comfortable. I yeah so there's, the coatings do make a difference people so I don't know if you guys are out there saying ah oh, coatings don't make a difference it does make a difference so overall feeling for me still feels like a Cowie but just less pitching more balance better performance more hold up your thoughts uh, 100%. I think the fork, what I struggle with the other bike is a little bit of what you talked about, the pitchiness. And I struggled with... We end up going, so on the old bike, we yep. end up going up a spring. Yep. Right. So, and I struggled, I always struggle with front end feel when I rode the Cowie and like having traction and having that compliance when you come into a corner and you think you have traction, you think you have everything and then it would just go. With this, I get that progressive, that stiff, that like the bike just feels like it sticks to the ground way better um i didn't really realize how good the motor really was early like i felt the excitement but once the track dried out a little bit i really was like really impressed with the mid-range power of it and how like i actually had to you know smooth out a little because it was so so much more aggressive and but it's a linear usable power me and gary talked about this so we had our 2022 kx450 for just like a baseline just to see what it feels like because let's face it you guys are watching this video to see if it's worth the juice is worth the squeeze are you going to spend that extra money for this sr versus a stock one so uh when i rolled onto the track i felt that that meat that gary's talking about there is less touchiness down low so it's smoother down low so the chassis doesn't get upset through the corners like the stock one does but once I'm out of the corner, you better hang on because it's a blend of of a Yamaha excitement, yep. but with a KTM smoothness. smoothness. Yeah. So you can kind of concur with that. Yeah, 100%. And I and I didn't notice how good that middle was until, like I said, the track dried out when it was wet. Like you could just get on the gas and it would it was good. And what I noticed is coming into the rut. I'm really bad with rear brake, right? Like I dragged the rear Shocking. brake. Shocking. So coming into the corners, when I'd be get on the brake and then I go to get on the gas with the, the other bike, I was like fighting the front end. I get in the rut and I'm like, uh, uh, uh. With this, like I could come in, get off the brake. As soon as I got on the throttle, the throttle was linear, smooth. The power hit, like I just got in and that just whoosh, tracked through the corner. It was really, I was really impressed with it. I was. I was happy. So it's a blend of excitement and smoothness. That's what I like to call it. It's not so touchy like the stock one, but man, it'll get you down the straightaway in a hurry. Another bonus to this cylinder head, and let's face it, it's just a cleanup of the head. There's nothing major done to this. It's just cleaned up and the ECU tuned and this muffler. So those are the major engine changes that you're going to feel on the track. I just feel like you can run third gear more. I wasn't able to lug the standard 22KX450. My buddy Greg is a lugger. We'll talk to him in a minute. But I feel like I can run third gear coming into corners, yeah. and I don't have to use the clutch as much. There's not. I don't have to have this thing up and moving for recovery. But with this motor, man, like it's surprising how easy it is to rise. I don't think I shifted once on the track for a one lap. I'm like, I haven't even downshifted. Yeah. So, and I'm. And I'm bigger, and so like running third gear is almost like obsolete for me a lot of times, unless I change gearing. And that's where I noticed a lot of stuff. I could I could hold it in third, and it was just like I, the roll on power. Like it just I'm like all of a sudden I'm like wow. Like I did not need to shift. I didn't need to clutch it. And the bike was it, it handled third awesome. I had such a, on such a tight track, State Fair is super tight. So this is not somewhere I would normally be like oh I'm gonna be in third here. I normally would. You really don't like this track. Uh, I haven't ridden here that much. No, I don't. Like, I, it's short, but it's the dirt's really good. The ruts are good, and so it's a good place. For me, I like this track because, in the world of Kawasaki KX450, this it's it, this track is its worst track. So I'm glad we came here to ride this bike because it's going to show me if it actually is better. Moving on to the 23 millimeter offset extra clamps, I like there's a lot of adjustability to it. I was worried about rigidity because this frame this chassis you always hear me talk about how good it is for straight line stability square edge bubble absorption i was worried that we we're going to get some rigidity out of this clamp i found none i was shocked like i thought i would get more vibration didn't get more vibration uh square edge edginess wasn't up i felt like it wasn't better it wasn't worse it kind of was the same yeah my comfort level that's where i was and i think it has a combination between the fork and the clamps like the comfort coming in the it was like those small square edge bumps you don't feel them the bike actually tracks through it i'm not getting the sharp feedback in my hands and i think that's just a comparison i think they did a really good job on the clamp and the fork working together so it's not all peaches and cream nope there is some things that i dislike and one of the reasons why 
I am not a Kawasaki guy is because it feels heavy coming into corners. Like it's a bigger bike. I will say with the suspension, although the, the dimensions of the overall length of the bike is probably the same, I haven't checked. It feels shorter, so that feels better to me, but side to side lean, I still feel like it's a big machine. I ride here quite a bit on other brands of bikes. Even a bigger feeling bike like a Yamaha feels lighter in some areas to me. So that's one trait that hasn't changed from the standard model. Um, Gary, same for you. You're a rear and steering guy. so I, I'm really, honestly, like load this thing up in my truck right now. I was super impressed with it. I you would take this over your KTM? I would take it over my KTM and probably even a Yamaha right now. Oh, wow. Honestly, I was that, I had the most fun I've had on a track that I'm not, that's not my, this is not my strong suit and not somewhere I like to ride. And I had probably the most fun I've had on a bike in a while. And I think as a complete package, like a few little tweaks and you, you can go racing. Like I don't like the levers. That was my, I've kind of been anti those levers. Uh, maybe foot pegs a little, but. Should, hold on. Should we switch glasses? I feel yeah. like you're drinking the Kool-Aid. So drinking. I'll, I'll uh, switch Gary's glasses here. So now this is more appropriate. Yep. Okay. Okay. So. Moving on, Gary loves this bike. I do. I do like this bike more than the standard edition. One more quick point about this KYB stuff. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, Showa stuff feels a little bit more dead feeling, less movement. When I said KYB usually has a better action, faster action, maybe a little bit less dampening feel, I was shocked when I hop on this because it's not the normal KYB feel. It has a lot of dampening through the whole stroke. It moves a little bit quick for me in the front, so I slowed the rebound down, and that helped. Um, I actually ended up moving the fork down to three millimeters from five millimeters just because I wanted to settle in the corner a little bit. You guys were thinking, well, Kiefer, you said it was, it doesn't feel, it feels heavy from side to side. That makes it worse. Actually, it made it better for me because I can feel the front end more coming through area one to area two. So. I like the fork at three mil, the action of the fork, a lot of dampening, man. There's a lot of performance within this fork. I can just slam in the faces of jumps, over jump some. Yeah. It's just a lot of comfort. Yeah, and not only can you, you OJ something, you come up short on something, it's it's very like it's very comfortable right. that that dampening is not an aggressive dampening like i've rode stuff that's stiff that you could oj something on but then you come into the corner and you can't get through the the squarage this stuff does both good i wouldn't say it's like oh it's great here great there i feel like it's just it's good everywhere on the track there's it's solid yeah i'm more of a stability type of rider than a cornering type of machine like i like bikes that are a little bit more stable I mean, it doesn't corner quite as good because to me it's a safer bike to ride uh, that's what I that's the feeling that I like I think this is I think this bike with this setup is more stable than the stock bike by far quite a bit and that's I'm the same way I like that stability lean back that fast when you're going fast that having that comfort you're not fighting the bike uh, I'm with Gary I don't like the levers uh, makes puts a funky callus on my finger I'm anti skinny lever guy but uh, overall ECU tune is perfect there's no gurgle off the bottom, doesn't feel rich, doesn't feel lean. I tried the green and white coupler. I'm a green coupler guy, which you didn't know that you rode with the last time. Didn't know if you noticed that. Uh, we started on the white, which you didn't know. Gotcha. Um, my test guy here doesn't know, so it's all right. We're just going to keep he just it. Nods at, he nods and goes, get on the bike. You got five minutes. You got five laps. Hurry up. I don't give him ultimatum. But I'm a green coupler guy, smoother, easier to control power. White was a little bit too jumpy and aggressive for me. Once I got on the green one, I can appreciate it more. So... Uh, if you guys got this bike, try the white coupler, but if you're noticing a little bit of a chassis movement, stick to the green coupler. It sticks to the ground better. I have more traction, linear, easier to ride. All right, I'm gonna go home. You rode this bike. You fellas watching this, you got wives, you've got a bank account. She might be in control of that, I don't know. Uh, you already might have a bike. $95.99 for a standard 2022 KX450 versus 12,399 bucks. Yep. Everyone's watching this video. It's it's time. It's is this thing worth the difference? Would you Christy gives you the green light to purchase a motorcycle? Would you rather have this or your standard uh, KX450? I take this only because I like the KYB suspension. You already have the pipe, you have the engine, you have everything ready to go. And I know there's people that like to tinker, throw the, throw the bike in the garage, you know, kick back a beer and like, you know how many YouTube comments are gonna be below saying, dude, it's way too expensive for a bike, two strokes, two strokes. 
to each his own, man. Some people like two strokes. I personally, I feel like I could change a few, just some grips, some levers, and I could race this bike the way it is. Right, like I wouldn't have a problem. I feel like it's competitive and good to go on anything I want to ride. I could go ride off road with it. I could ride moto with it. So I think it's worth that bump because I. We and and really if you added all this up, guys, 16, it's almost sixteen thousand dollars for everything. And you're gonna do that anyway. Like if you're a competitive guy and you run a race, who I mean, you're gonna put a pipe on. You're gonna put clamps. You're gonna do all this stuff. So, yeah, I would say it's you're saving money in the long run. It's a better bike, and when you're rolling in the pits to sign, you know, come to the sign up tower. You got a you're gonna look so sick. I would change. I would change the monster claw because I'm not sponsored by him, you know. But other than that, all right, Gary Sutherland, everybody. All right, as you guys know, I like to bring other people in here just because uh, it's a big world out there. There's a lot of different types of riders. My buddy Greg Loop, retired from the sheriff's department, 33 years, 210 pounds, 58 years old. This is the type of guy that has money. You're retired. Uh, it's got money and you have money to spend right because you just you want one bike for a long time and uh, Greg fits a demographic that I think this fits. There's a lot of vet guys buying factory edition So KX 450 SR Greg, let's just start out. Let's call a spade a spade yes. You haven't been a Kawasaki guy since the two-stroke era. Correct. Correct. Now I love my Kawasaki's back then but not a fan in the four-stroke age. Right. So I brought Greg because I know he was, uh, wasn't was sure about Kawasaki. I go, he's going to give me an honest opinion. So he rode the stock bike, which you really liked, and then you hop on this bike. So right away, the difference between engines for you, feeling-wise. Um, the difference for me was obviously much more power um, on the factory edition. Um, special racer. Is my bad. <laughs> SR, special racer. Yeah. Um, it had uh, it had more grunt, if you will. And the stock one, I have my little notes here, and it, it's a real for someone that's my age. I haven't been riding. I just retired here recently, so I have not been training. The stock one was really good. I mean, great power band. I was able to ride a gear high. Okay, yeah, that's you know, you know the long and linear power of the stock bike is nice. It's there's not, not there's not a ton of excitement with the stock one. No. And then you hop on this, you're thinking, oh man, I hope there's not too much. Yeah, and that's not the case. Um, it has a little more power, better over rev. Of course, you should, at my age, you shouldn't be over revving anything, but uh, it, it, it's very, very strong. And I found myself at times riding two gears above, uh, covering the clutch. And again, those lovers are skinny as hell. So I like a little fatter clutch. I like something a little bit bigger in my hand. I don't know that that sound right. That doesn't sound right. Okay, but, but moving on, moving the thir on. third, <laughs> third, you're a third gear kind of lugging yes, guy. Yes. I, I complain about you all the time. Like you got yes. a downshift, Greg. You got a downshift. You're like, this is what I like. It's easy to ride. Yes. I watched you a little bit, and we can watch the video. But running third gear around the vet track here, no problems. No problems. No problems. Um, the only one I ran into with the modified bike, um, a couple times it wanted to stall, right. and I don't know why. But the stock one, I was. It was easier for me, being out of shape, a little bit older, it was easier for me to keep it going, if you will. It never had a problem. Um, I was feeling a little frisky out there, charging a little harder into the corners. Um, but this sucker is fast. I mean, and it's nothing that will jerk your arms out. It just builds up a, a really powerful charge from corner to corner right. and you find yourself getting on the brakes trying to slow down so that way you make it but almost uh, a little deceiving at times yeah I think that's a very good description it was deceiving uh, moving on to the KYB suspension now that uh, you come from a, you just actually purchased a Yamaha yes and you were a little bit deterred when you came back you're like oh man this is this is pretty nice so yeah KYB you're familiar with this setup correct how much better is it than standard show of stuff if it is at all. Uh, I felt the difference in because of how much faster this thing was. Um, the the stand up, the stay up in the travel was better on this at my weight. And also uh, feeling a little frisky and I started over jumping stuff and flat landing. Um, my wrists feel good. Yeah. I feel good. Uh, it sucked up everything, uh, smoothed it out really, really well. Um, but, you know, the stock one, now we're talking about a vet track. Yeah. We're not talking about the big track. Yeah, not lots of bumps in the vet track. No. Um, the stock one was, it was, it was, even for my weight, it was, it was acceptable. I, um, I wasn't ready to get on the big track 
with the stock bike with my weight because yeah. it, it would I'd have probably broken wrists and ankles or something. So for me, I guess for Greg's point of view, I guess you guys watching this, I almost feel like this suspension is a little safety net. Uh, the show stuff can do the same thing this stuff can, you know. Um, the show stuff is great, but give a little bit of a safety net with KYB, at least this setting on this bike compared to the stock bike, where you can over jump a little bit, you can make a mistake. Uh, it's not going to blow through the stroke. You're not going to come into a corner and have nose heavy, you know, trying to dive into a rut. It's a little bit flatter of a chassis. So you just have a little bit of a safety net with the KYB suspension. Uh, okay, so ergonomics, we didn't talk about that with Gary. Unlike a Yamaha we just purchased, the cockpit is a little funky. It's hard to get used to. You've got to do a lot of work to feel comfortable. I hop on this. It's similar to me like a Honda. I hop on it. I feel comfortable. I'm on top of the bike more. Uh, I like the bar bend. I can move these mounts. I move the X-Trig mounts to the middle hole with the mount back. That's where we were, and we all different sizes and we both liked it so ergonomically what do you think uh, very very easy to move around on transitioning um, with the older bikes I just remember especially like the two strokes having the big pocket and it was it was such a hassle trying to get up on the gas tank when you want to come into the corner this is just it's smooth it's one move and it, it you never get hooked up on anything it's just very very comfortable if okay you will. rapid fire questions really quick this is going to be fun this is going to be a uh, really quick okay yeah you're a yama you're on your yama which corner is better to you the cowie or yama cowie <laughs> did i answer too soon no. the cowie the cowie does okay Absolutely. so i do feel like on paper, well, I don't feel like on paper it is lighter of a bike, so maybe that's what you feel. Uh, awesome. Engine character feeling, Yamaha or this bike? Ooh, the Yamaha's good. Yeah. Um, it's really good, and it takes good care of me. Um, I at this point, I hard to say. It's hard to say. We're splitting hairs. Yeah. Suspension, bone stock, right now. The Yamaha. Yamaha. Okay, so. There are some positives to this Kawasaki. I'm surprised he even mentioned Kawasaki one time because he was anti-Kawasaki before this. So overall, here's the question, just like I asked Gary. Pitcher Denise. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're, okay, you just bought a Yamaha. Yeah. You almost you spent basically ten, we'll call it ten grand. Ten grand. An extra three thousand mm -hmm. dollars. This bike. Because you have an M claw on your other bike. Why not have another M claw? What? Thank you. Why and uh, you, you have to keep You have an extra three thousand bucks. Is this worth it for you? As a rider, is this worth it? At this stage in the game, what I'm doing, yes. no, it's not worth it to me. Because I'm not racing. I don't know if I'll ever race again at this age. Um, I may, may not. But um, I'm happy thus far with the Yamaha. But if I was going to get back into racing, would I buy, look into something like this? I think I would. Right. I really would. And that sounds God's truth. I know I'm splitting hairs and I'm not giving you a definitive answer, but right now, this stage in my life, you know, yeah. uh, just. It's, it's tough. Yeah, I, I just want to ride my bike, you know. So for me, if you guys are asking, where am I at with this? So I race, I'm competitive. Um, I like to beep measure a lot at the tracks. I'm sure Gary, if Gary was here, he would appreciate this. He would. For me, if I'm spending the money on the bike, I'm looking at $10,000 anyway for a new bike. A couple extra thousand dollars from what I'm getting here, I like that. For me, it is worth it. If you guys are out there, I'm going to go buy KYB stuff for my stock uh, Kawasaki. You're still going to be upwards even more than what this bike is MSRP-wise. So for me, the juice is worth the squeeze. I think the parts that are on this bike make a difference on the track. So I personally... Got the glasses on. I'm drinking the green juice. You, you, you don't and uh, it's a fun bike to ride. You guys know, I always say I want to ride a Cowie more. This bike makes me want to go ride a green bike more. So I like this bike. And for me, it's uh, if you guys have one, we're going to have some settings up on keyforinktesting.com. And uh, we'll get you some more information about this bike. We're going to try to ride this bike during the year. Check the durability out. See how long the packing lasts in the Pro Circuit muffler. And just break it all down at several tracks not just one track so stay tuned you can go to racerxonline.com for more information or you can always email me chris at keyforinktesting.com if you have a burning question that we didn't answer here i'm sure there's a lot of them no problem our door is open and uh thank you for joining us as always 12 issues 30 bucks there's always some kind of free gift that we're giving away here at racer x online so uh subscribe now it's christmas time it's a great gift uh get a free gift and just throw that in there with the subscription why not see you guys in the next test